to today's introduction to the digital age. A very important and a very timely topic to talk about because as it seems right now, the digital age is changing everything. It changes the way families stay in touch through mobile phones and social network. It changes the way the economy works, including the labor market that you're about to enter. It revolutionizes government and public administration. It modernizes culture production and entertainment. It transforms the health sector. It changes the way people find and fall in love. It triggers political revolutions. Presidents tumble and fall with digital commerce communication. And last but not least, it seems like it is changing education. Proof of concept being that I'm talking to you through a video recording. So <laughs> there are lots of things that we have to talk about today. Before we get into any more formal theory, let's start with a very simple example to illustrate the importance communication and technological change in communication has on society, on social organizations. For example, at the time of the old Greeks, more than 2,000 years ago, 350 years before Christ, Aristotle famously argued that democracy could obviously never be executed beyond a radius of 70 kilometers, about 45 miles. Why? Well, because information couldn't travel further in a single day. Nobody could walk further than possibly 45 miles on a day and therefore no communication, obviously no democracy. So the definition of democracy was that it had to be restricted to this kind of limited geographic scope. Now, 2000 years later, around the 1860s, the Pony Express uh, was, tr was starting to join the East Coast and the West Coast in the United States and democracy was implemented on a scale much larger than that across the entire country of the United States of America. So when President Lincoln was elected in 1860, the information could travel from the East Coast to the West Coast at what they said, the speed of a horse's breath. And in only seven days and 17 hours, the message of Lincoln, Lincoln's election from the East Coast reached the newspapers in California already. In other words, people in California had no idea who was actually president for one week because information couldn't travel faster from the East Coast to the West Coast. But around this time already, people were very impressed by the great advancements of information and communication technologies. For example, by the telegraph that used Morse code. So uh, people were starting to say that the world of matter has become a great nerve vibrating thousands of miles in a breathless point of time. Rather, the round globe is a vast head, a brain, instinct with intelligence. Then in 1876, when Graham Bell invented the telephone, imagination started to grow wings and recognize popular science outlet like Scientific American stated that the scattered members of civilized communities will be as closely united, so far as instant telephonic communication is concerned, as the various members of the body are now by the nervous system. That was... 130 years ago. Nowadays, of course, if we look at the global telecommunication infrastructure, analogies with regard to a nervous system don't seem so far-fetched. During the recent decade or so, the world's technological capacity to store, compute, and communicate information has reached these mind-boggling orders of magnitude with which Mother Nature processes information. For example, all the world's technological storage technologies combined can by now store more information than is stored in the DNA of the 60 trillion cells of a human body. All the world general purpose computers combined can execute more instructions per second than a human brain can execute nerve impulses per second. And global digital communication networks send more bits around per second as the human inner circulatory system sends blood cells around. 
Now, these are not one-to-one -one comparison. What I am not saying is that the world's total computational power is one human brain. Even so, some public uh, tech magazines cite my research results like that. But <laughs> let me show you, I never said something like that. What I do say is that by now, uh, our technological capacities to process information are reaching these amazing information processing capacity that Mother Nature is using to produce some something as complex as biological life. So that brings back these old analogies of the world of matter being one giant nerve vibrating thousands of miles in a breathless point in time. In an average minute, cyberspace produces about 350,000 microblog news in the forms of Twitter tweets, 400,000 pictures, 700,000 posts on one social network like Facebook, 2 million Google searches each minute, 11 hours of music are uploaded only on one platform, SoundCloud, and each minute, a hundred hours of video are uploaded on a video platform like YouTube. Each minute, a hundred hours. There's obviously no way you could ever watch that. And that gives us also a very concrete picture of actually what society consists of. For example, this here shows when somebody on Twitter says, Good morning, buenos dias, or buongiorno, uh, guten morgen. Uh, the green one is at 8 a.m., the dark red ones is at 10 a.m. And where there is connectivity, and we will have to talk about that later as well, we can now see very clearly actually what society also is, what it consists of. There is a digital footprint that now becomes visible. This process of digitalization has happened in what is a historical blink of an eye. What you see here, the white part, that's the analog information in the world. The little green part is the digital information. And in the 80s, there was no digital information. Then you can see very quickly after the year 2000, the digital share is basically exploding and capturing the vast majority of the world's stored information. That doesn't mean that analog information in the form of paper or analog tape doesn't grow anymore. It is still growing. But digital information has basically exploded. And this happened extremely quickly. Back in the late 80s, less than 1% of the world's stored information was in digital format. More than 99% was in analog format, stored in papers or, or analog videotapes. Then by the year 2000, it was 25% digital. The year 2002, we often consider as the beginning of the digital age because there for the first time humankind stored more information on digital format as on analog format. By 2007, it was already 94% and by now more than 99% of the world's information, stored information, is in digital format. So in what is an historical blink of an eye, we have absolutely entered the digital age. And digital information and communication has some very important characteristic that changes the way society works.